Before we get started today, we just wanna let you know that we've got just a handful of concerts left. Just a handful. This yeah. year, and it's the only ones we have planned into the future at this point. So if you wanna see us do musical comedy. Oh yeah. You can come to Albuquerque, New Mexico on November 20th, Phoenix, Arizona on the 21st, Sacramento, California the 22nd, and Valley Center, California on November 23rd, singing some songs. We're gonna make these real special shows because we ain't gonna do it for a while. Rhett so come and on Link out. Live.com. That's Rhett and Link Live.com. Get your tickets there. Don't just, don't just Google it and click on the first place you see. That's right. Now on with the biscuit. Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we're discussing, what, this is your brainchild. How, how do you wanna put this? Uh, well, the, the catchy way to talk about it is, are we out of touch? But the way we're going to discover just how out of touch we might be, if we are. With ourselves? Is with, I, with aliens, with what? With Generation Z. Oh. Are we losing our grip on the trend, on the currency of, of pop culture? And our of, kids are Generation Z, by the way. Can you look up what officially, Jacob, can you look up officially what years you were supposed to be born in to be Generation Z, just to verify that? Just so we, when we come back to it, I can seem knowledgeable. <laughs> and is there a, what generation are we? Uh, we actually, we are. 41, 42 year old, old farts. It's, we're right. So a lot of people call us uh, exennials, I think is what some people call us because we're basically right in between Generation X and Millennials and we're not really either one. If you're like 41, 42 years old, you're this, I, I think it's Xennials or Xennials. Okay. Um, is there a Generation Y? Yeah. You missed it, man. <laughs> yeah, who, who, no one cares about those those people. We're, all, we're off to the Zs, which, which uh, Jacob will clarify if it's our, uh, that that's our children. There is I mean, a, I, a, it, like a rough range and then a specific range that some people use. Born so, between 1995 and 2015. Right, so all of our children. Yeah, you know, we, he, here's the thing. I I just take pride in the fact that in this town when I tell people, when it comes up that we have kids, it's like, oh, you got kids? And I'm like, yeah, I got a 16 year old and then it's like they're just this face just drops. Yeah, they can't believe you it. You know, in this town, so I'm I'm just grateful that I got I've got I got kids that old, and I still feel this young. But, but the am question I in is, touch with them? The, well, the reason a sixteen I, year old, a fourteen year old, and a nine year old. I'll get into uh, what we're gonna, we're going to go through some Generation Z slang that was uh, on a list. That's the way that the list was created is very funny, and so okay. I, I, I'll get into that when we get into the conversation. You're gonna test me? I'm gonna run through it with you, see if you know this stuff. It's pretty long, I don't know how much we'll get through. I'm gonna tell you whether or not I knew that stuff. But the reason I thought about doing this was because I don't even remember where I was, but I realized that I was saying something and I was like, I think I sound old. Because <laughs> I specifically listen to the way my kids talk and some of the lingo that they use. In fact, lingo is probably an, a word that makes me sound old. You know what I'm saying? Like, lingo, yeah. what's that, dad? <laughs> and uh, I realized that if I'm like excited about something or if I'm trying to tell somebody that I think something's great, I might say like, that's awesome. And then I was like, I don't think my kids would ever say that something was awesome anymore. I don't hear them say that. No, and I, so my I just kids start, don't use the word awesome. And so I just started realizing that like, oh yeah, I do, even though we are in this medium that is still considered new media and people look at us as like, oh yeah, those young guys on the internet, we're not, we're old and we've got kids that are getting older and about to go to college in just a couple of years and we are definitely out of touch to some degree. Today we're gonna find out just how out of touch we are. Mm. I, I'd like to, Give an update on my my shower window situation. Yeah, it's quite a situation. Uh, though uh, it has nothing to do with being in touch, it, unless can, you unless you want to talk about me being in touch with my neighbor. Can who you I talk can about see it out of my shower window while I'm showering? Can you talk about it in as without having you haven't seen any, anything in the lingo? Can you talk about it as if you're in Generation Z? Uh, 
perhaps, bro. I, <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's yeah. off to a rough start. I think uh, as <laughs> perhaps I, as I've pre you think they used the word perhaps as I've pre established my peeps, my shower is totally lit <laughs> because. Well, it, it's actually, it's hard, it'd be hard to light anything in there in terms of like setting anything on fire because it's so wet in there. Right, you gotta have I a mean, waterproof light. <laughs> like it's, or a shower light. I mean, there, there it's is. A, it's a special light. Well, there, there are lights in there. There are, there are two recessed lights above the shower, which I don't use because I have a window which lets in all of my natural light and so it is lit by the natural glow of the environment. You don't ever window. take showers when it's dark? Very, very rarely. I take them in the morning, um, but interestingly enough, there are exceptions, and my update is related to an exceptional time that I took a shower. Because I don't know if if you if you haven't been listening to all these, you know, don't feel guilty. I'll bring you up to speed. I actually, feel a little gu guilty. You're you're missing out on yeah. You should keep up on on the on the updates. But the fact that Rhett told me when I see my neighbor leaving for work and I'm in the shower shampooing, I gotta make eye contact and assert my dominance. I can't remember why and I definitely. It was for the future, it was for when the world falls apart and you're asserting yourself as a leader of your community. And especially because I can't remember why, I don't remember why I actually tried it, but I did. And then ever since then, his car's gone when I get in the shower and I, my, my routine's the same, so I think my dominance led him to adjust his routine to go to work earlier just so he doesn't have to almost see me out of the corner of his eye staring at him when I'm shampooing my mm -hmm. hair. Mm -hmm. Now, as I've established, the window is a widescreen format window and it exposes me from the collarbones up, I think from his vantage point, when he's in his driveway backing out and he, and he looks forward, he can see me. Um. But I went, over this past weekend, I went uh, mountain biking. Me and Lincoln went mountain biking. Uh, I didn't ask him to describe it, but he might would have, he wouldn't have said awesome. And he wouldn't have said lit either. You really gave up on the whole Generation Z thing pretty early in this. I know, it's tough, it's too tough. Um, but, so then when I got back, it, let's see, it was probably, well it was, it was kinda late, it was, it was dinner time. It was like six or 6.30. And I was like, well, I need to take a shower. You know, I'm pretty sweaty. So I get in there and I'm taking a shower. And I'm still, I got my window open, I'm looking out. It's like, oh, the sun's kind of going down. This is a beautiful time to take a shower and enjoy my window. And I looked at the driveway and I saw my neighbor's car there. He was not in the car. Mm -hmm. And then I turned a little bit further and I looked in a place that I had not looked. And it was my neighbor's house. And Hold on, they, how have you not looked there? Well, because I'm looking out at the majestic scenery. There's like mountains and stuff. I'm not gonna look at his house. Now I do, can I just interject and say that you talk about seeing the scenery while showering as if the only time you see the scenery around your house is while showering. Like out of every other window, it doesn't exist. Or perhaps, bro, if you go outside, maybe you would also see it. Like you talk about it like you're yeah. on a spaceship that has like a holodeck situation yeah. and the only the way to experience only place. what Earth was like at one time is to go take this shower. The only other place I can see that this vantage point of the mountains is if I walk out my front door, which is nice, you know, you're exiting, you get to see it, but I don't have any other windows. Like both boys have a window in their bedroom that faces that same direction, but there, those are the only four places you can see that vantage point. So, and I'm in the shower every day. I gotta look at something. Okay. And it's not gonna be my neighbor's house, but I happen to look over there and they put in a new window. They remodeled after I put in my shower window. Mm -hmm. And I looked through that window and I realized I'm looking at the family next door eat dinner. No. Yeah. So How here, have you not seen the dinner table so far? because they haven't been at They've it. They've never been at it. So it's just like kind of a dark a window problem. to nothing. So now I'm freaking showering and I'm looking at, and he's at the head of the table looking at me, <laughs> <laughs> eating his dinner. Oh, the tables I'm have like, turned. I'm like, man, uh, you, you, I he, feel like a heel. He was slow playing you. 
He made he lulled you into thinking that your dominance had worked. He was like, I'm gonna leave early a couple of times, but I'm just waiting for that day he accidentally takes a shower while we're eating dinner and I'm gonna stare him down. And a man looking at you while he's eating is especially dominant. Yeah, I wasn't eating. Because in like the history of the he animal the kingdom, hand. the history of the animal yeah. kingdom, while you're eating, like this is a this is when you show <laughs> who's boss, right. and if you can eat and look at somebody in the eye, you right. you, you own them, he owns you. Because eating is survival. It's like I'm currently taking in the calories I need to dominate you. Are you eating right now? No, you're just getting clean. Like what? Who needs to be clean? Yeah, right. This is why he's. Oh my gosh, I think you're right. Because you know what? What was the expression on his face? That was that was two days ago, and then this morning, I'm taking a shower at my normal allotted morning time, he's and back I back in the car. I look out there, and yeah, he did it. I swear to you. He was in his car. That's exactly what happened. He was happened. in his car. This guy, he must be listening to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he was really in his car. And I, I, I really had a hard time looking at him. I really tried. It's like, man, you're, I think this is your dominance. You're, <laughs> you're, you're controlling me, man. I'm sitting here staring at a guy eating dinner with his I will his say, I'm having a lot of fun. It's wrong, and man. And I've never seen this man. It's wrong. Actually, you know I what? I felt bad. Um, but shower, nobody wants to watch a dude shower no, I, while they're eating dinner. I did see, with their family? I did see him and his wife. Two young kids? The, the other day when I was uh, dropping Shepard off at your house, um, they were getting in the car and I mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I get to see this guy. Yeah. But he got in the car right as I realized, I got a good look at his wife. Um, I mean, I didn't like make a, do I didn't try to dominate her with my looks <laughs> or anything. <laughs> but. <Don't. laughs> Um, but I didn't get I didn't get a good look at those. And things. every time I talk about this, <laughs> Christy and Lily just tell me, "Dad, you got to stop talking about this." I mean, I think the oh, you mean on this podcast? yes, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I yeah. can't stop talking about it. Yeah, I mean, I just can't help but give you an update because it, is this all in my mind? And are you are you planting these things in my mind? Because Christy's like. You didn't really look at him out the window. You're just saying that for the podcast. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I did. No, I, bet you I did. That's I not did. True. The, the, you know, the, the rea like the, uh, my sense of reality is being blurred by you and hey, the shower window. Listen, you're going to thank me later. For what? When you've got that guy, when you've got a dog collar on that guy and you've got a chain around his neck. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Like 15 He's years listening. from now. <laughs> I'm convinced he's listening. After the big one happens, you'll thank me. I don't, if, <laughs> if he's there tomorrow morning, man, and what if he's eating? Well, I mean, it takes a little time between us recording and then releasing the episode, then him listening to it, and then him, him deciding to take a turkey leg into his car as he's going to work and dominate me by eating in okay, his car. If that if, happens, if he eats, if he makes he eye eats contact in the car, with you while, while eating, eating in, in the, the car, car, he's definitely listening. Oh, God. Now, cause you talked about your neighbor like a year ago and the whole thing about like the tree and stuff. And it completely reconciled the whole thing. And I we're, went. We're, 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 I wouldn't say we're friends at this point, but we're in, we're in regular communication about if somebody's gonna have a loud party or whatever. Well, my wife is also in communication with uh, the your, neighbors. your neighbor, yeah. My neighbors. Yeah, she knows her now. She met her around town. No. Yeah. How did she know? How? It's the, it, they work out at the gym together. How does she and know? And they see each other around town. How, but how did it come, to get, how did it come I, out? I don't know how Christy put it together, but she did. Yeah, well, we're, it doesn't matter. We're good friends. We exchange wine at Christmas time. Okay. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a sign of a good neighbor. Maybe if I, if I get in the shower with food next time, then I can still I mean, assert my dominance. I mean, I do think it should be a large turkey. It's right? gotta be like meat on a bone type yeah, situation. Yeah, this is, Could the, be like this a, is the one time where a turkey leg makes all sense because. Like a tomahawk cut. Um, that could be like a large beef rib. Yeah. Beef rib. Yeah, that could be good. Could be that. Yeah, but it's hard to come by though. Turkey legs, dime a dozen. And uh, you don't wanna do like a corn dog because that'll disintegrate in the shower. I might have to keep it, yeah, I, I might, because you're right, I might have to keep that slab of meat in the shower until the right opportunity, then I'm gonna have to pick it up and eat it. <laughs> it's gonna have to be there. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is, I mean, we. I think you know what you gotta do next. Yeah, I, I, I feel good about this. I think, 
I, th- I think this is the right decision. Okay, the well, saga I look, continues. I look man. forward to seeing how it goes. I mean, you really got to come up to my shower. Yeah, I'm. I'm really interested. We get a turkey. You before you get a turkey leg in there, I'll come up there. <laughs> a nice steamy turkey leg. Okay, we're gonna see just how out of touch we are. Uh, but first, we want to let you know. Uh, what are, what are we telling people about this time? The, the, Bleak, the Creek Bleak Creek merch, merch is just, it's been out a week. Um, uh, so you can no, get it. No, it hasn't been out a week. It drops when you're hearing this, right? This is the video November version, 4th. right? I know this is confusing, but this oh. ad only lives in the video version. That's right. See, it's I got out, a sharp mind. It's been out a week. It's been out a week. So this pig picking shirt is is an authentic replica of one that you might get at a pig picking, but this one's related to the book. And we've got a hyper color shirt uh, that changes color, temperature sensitive, just like the one referenced in the book. This is Bleak Creek on it. We got the Lost Causes shirt. We got a Bowie's Creek School, a Bleak Creek School sweatshirt. It says Bleak Creek Demons on it. What else we got? Oh, uh, all types of stuff. Check it out. Mythical.com. And also there's a book that all the merch comes from called The Lost Causes of Bleak Creek and. Buy it for a friend if you already have one. Or if you, if you don't have one, why haven't you bought one yet? Come on, read y'all. You know, the more you know. LeVar Burton and Reading Rainbow and things. All right, thank you for supporting entertainment, repping your boys. Okay, um, so there was an article and you know what, before we, you know, I did wanna mention, I wanted to acknowledge uh, everyone who's talking about Lost Causes of Bleak yeah, Creek. Right. Um, uh, on the Mythical Society, there's great conversations happening there. We're really enjoying hearing how you are processing uh, the story and, and, and experiencing it. It's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a big part of our satisfaction. Like it, it's, it feels like a completion to hear from you guys uh, in terms of like having worked so hard on this novel. So um, on Twitter, hashtag Bleak Creek at the Mythical Society and um, wherever you wanna discuss the novel, we, and we're gonna we appreciate en- it. We're gonna enter into that discussion. So make sure you are tagging all those things so we can see them as we begin to gather questions and comments and insights and observations that you have made about the book. And then we're gonna do a podcast sometime soon where we enter into that conversation and maybe offer some insights into that. So you're gonna what? What is it? What is this? Uh, so there's quiz? a there's a guy. Uh, let's see where he is. Where is he? Uh, he is in. Where's he at? Where's he at? He's in Lowell, Massachusetts. Okay. Uh, his name is Mr. Callahan. He's a teacher, and uh, he uh, there was an article, at least in BuzzFeed. I think it may have been in other places as well earlier this year, where he started to keep a list of the th- words that he heard his students using because he was like, I'm lost. I don't understand what this stuff means, but every time I hear them use a certain phrase or a word that I don't understand, that seems like there's a generational divide here, I'm going to write it down and then get them to define it for me. Okay, cool, and how old is he? Uh, I don't know specifically. But I thought you told me he was about our age. Oh, yeah, forty three. He's forty three. It says yeah, the article is like forty three year old teacher. Yeah. Okay. So he's our age, um, which makes this even more relevant to us. And he's de- our irrelevance more. He's relevant? dealing regularly with Generation Z people, which we do because we are parents to them, and also I know there's a fair amount of people born between ninety five and two thousand fifteen who listen to this podcast and enjoy the other things that we do. Um. So he started making this list, and of course, when word got out about the fact that he had this list, he made it into a Google Doc that is now publicly available to anyone who wants to. Yes, get it. open source it. And I think the interesting thing about this, as opposed to simply entering in these phrases into uh, the Urban Dictionary and getting the definition, which I could have done, I wanted to just stick with Mr. Callahan's list uh, exclusively because. I think that maybe some of his definitions or the definitions that he got from his particular students in Massachusetts. Uh, some people may, who, who know, you may have a contention with one of these definitions, I, I don't know. Um, but this is this is the information that he received. You're gonna definitely know some of these and you're definitely hit gonna me, not Hit know. me with one. So, a force, so starting with the first one. Two words, A, a force. space, 
force. Yeah. Like a force to be reckoned with. Like that, it's a complimentary, uh, it's a way to describe someone like, my neighbor is who showers while staring at me is such a force. It's like it's. Well that's, it's, it's, that, that's your old man's understanding of it, uh, which is what I would agree with. But it is unnecessarily excessive effort. Okay, yeah, that man who sh stares at me while showering is a, f okay, that's even better and more accurate. And I don't even. Unnecessarily. Ex don't read it because you're gonna read other things. Unnecessarily excessive effort. I don't even know how that would be used in a sentence. He's forcing it. Oh, that's a force. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, that was a force. Now. You're forcing so, him, you're trying too hard. But so now, I, we, we used to use this, like my dad would say, like in, it's in sports language. Like sometimes you'll be sh you'll be shooting and you're trying too hard, like shooting the basketball. Mm -hmm. You'd be you're like, don't don't it. force it, don't force it, don't force it. Let it come. Just to you. shoot it. Just let it happen. Just relax into it. So is that the same thing? I think so. Yeah, but think, it's I a force. They use it in a specific way. They so they're not saying don't force it. They're saying a force. That's a force. So there's no there's no no usage sentence. in the sentence. Mm. I wanted Callahan needs a new column. In, in his Google Doc. Yeah, Mr. Callahan, we would invite you to update your Google Doc. But I mean, he needs to open it up for edits. He needs to open source it. Uh, bang 30s. <laughs> Never heard this. Bang 30s. I'm about to go bang 30s. That yeah. means like, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna take a power nap. I'm gonna sleep for 30 minutes. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna bang out 30. Yeah. Uh, that's not what it means. Uh, pa power nap's taken for 30 minutes, I think that's too long, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it should be 20, huh? Z Generation Z, they don't, they're, they're, take, they're, it they're sleeping too much. to fight someone as in a physical altercation. So you've got my fist plus my fist is 10, plus your fist and your fist is 20. It's, plus, it's when three people fight. No, I think it's my fist and my fist, your fist and your fist, and then, Either both of my feet, both of your feet, or one of your foots. <laughs> but none of my feet. And one of yeah. my feet. Either both of your feet and none of mine, or one and one. So it's a, it, it's, a, it's a boxing match where kicking with one leg is allowed. But you don't know where the 30 comes from. I have no idea. They're banging 30s in the, in the common area. We gotta call the popo. We gotta. Banging 20s would have made so much more sense. Banging 20s. Bang in 30s. Again, we have no, what, what, do you, do Callahan's you, not giving us do you, enough. I mean, do you wanna, do you, I, I didn't, I just thought that we should just let our ignorance be on display and that might be more entertaining than actually well, trying to clarify some of this. It, it doesn't seem like we're ignorant, it also seems like we're crotchety old men because we're complaining about why it doesn't make sense even though we've been told what it means. Well, I mean, Give we, me can, another we can have opinions. Beat your face. <laughs> beat your face? Yeah, beat your face. Beat your face. I, I, I got, I'm getting frustrated that there's no sentence. Cause I don't know, is this a, is this a, is this an imperative? Like, hey man, beat your this? face. My wife, I thought my wife was ready, but then I realized she was still beating her face. <laughs> Putting on makeup? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Applying makeup. <laughs> Beat your face. Also, cake your face, but is, cake your face is too easy. Too, too, beat your face. That's, this, I bet this came from the. Uh, what are those people who make those YouTube videos about makeup called? Makeup people. <laughs> you don't know. Makeup gurus. Yeah. That Be whole, beauty gurus. Beauty gurus. Gurus. Beauty gurus. Beauty gurus. I bet it came from. I, I bet one of them said, so "Beat your face." Because here's the thing. This almost, my, my kids have not said any of these. They, my kids don't say lit. They don't even say dope. Like to me, the, the, the one that if I was going to make a calculated effort to try to speak Gen Z, I'd say dope. But I cannot bring myself to do it. I'm, I've got too much pride, and I know that I just—I I don't mean that's it. That's kind of old school, though. But it also, they also say it. They, they all say it, right? If something's good, if something's cool or awesome, they say, that's dope, man. 
dope. And dope's been oh, around. Does your, none of your kids say that? My kids do not say that. I think Locke says it sometimes, right? Locke's got, uh, Locke hasn't said any of these, but Locke definitely, because he's into hip hop, he, he's, I've heard a, a number of these. Maybe, maybe Lincoln has said it. Maybe Lincoln has said it. Because it, it's definitely that hip hop, pop culture influence there. But I just, could you ever hear yourself saying? That's dope. Dope. Actually, out of all the things on this list, dope is feels like low hanging fruit. Man. I know, I know. That's why I'm asking. That's dope, man. I, really though? Would you say it? I'm, Could you say? I'm going to say it today. You're going to try it out. I'm going to try it out. I don't even think that's one though. Is it? I mean, it's not on this list. It just feels a little obvious. But I do agree. They say it. Now, here's the thing. What? Let's go all the way. We have to agree that we're cool with each other saying dope because if we're not, you know what's gonna happen. Well you can't, you can't if I say it and you're around, you can't look at me like, oh right. you just dropped it. Right, and you can't, it, do that. you can't do that to me because that's what we do. We, we have this like, we, we, we're very self-aware and we, I don't know, we have this, and maybe it's a gift, maybe it's a curse, but we definitely have this constant critic of ourselves that's like, how would other people be, how would I be perceiving someone else if they were doing or saying what I'm doing right now? That's self-awareness mm -hmm. um, by my definition. Um, and then we have the second layer because we're together so much that we police each other so we're, we're other aware. So if, if either of us does anything that's out of the ordinary, a little odd, especially when it comes to like saying something like dope is a perfect example. We'd be all over that for the other one. Be like, really? This ain't that ain't you. You're fronting. I don't think I would say that if you said something was dope. I'd be like, oh, that's an interesting. I, I, now, if you said sincerely, though, if I said it sincerely, there, I I would know that something in your brain had been triggered. That was like he's trying something. It's like when I got those pants and I roll in with my pants, and you're like, your pants are what are those? Like hammer pants? I don't can't remember what you said. They were like. They're like baggy pants, baggy jeans. I don't know if I said anything about them. You didn't have to say anything <laughs> because I knew what you were thinking because again, it's this self-policing thing. You thought something, you noticed the pants, you decided not to say anything. Well, there was a big, there was a big difference from your pants that you had been wearing and all of a sudden your pants are very different, yeah. Right, <laughs> so, so it's like what you needed, what I needed from you, man, was permission. I needed you to you don't say. Need permission from me. I acknowledge your pants, and you know what? I don't know if I like them yet, but I applaud you expanding yourself. Like literally, the pants are expanded. <laughs> you know, if you said something like that, you'd be like, it's kind of like when we devoted an entire hour to talking about your hair growing out. It That's gave, a little different. That's not but, pants. I can't take it off. But you, but in the in the in the policing way. I stepped out of the way, like you said your piece, and I stepped out of the way. And like you knew that there was not gonna be any criticism from me or constant judgment, like cutting my eyes, like okay, what is he doing? I don't agree with this, or I think this is suspicious, or this ain't, this isn't really him, you know? Can we do that with the word dope? I'm gonna say it today, and we're going to two different places today. Together? And I can think, I, I believe that I, in both, so I will use it in both circumstances. I'll say dope. And maybe something else that we that we learn about. I have heard this one. I think when I do it, I'm a, I'm gonna do it too. Can we both do it? No, you need a, a different word. I'm gonna, I know you can't have, it was my idea. Okay, well then you can have dope. I'm gonna do a different word. I don't, we can't go into a place where we're with somebody and then both people are like, Rhett and Link both describe different things as dope. <laughs> See, you're so self-aware, man. Who yeah. cares what they think? I mean, I, I, I don't really care. But I, if we're doing an experiment, it needs to be. In, we we got to set all the the parameters. It's like one person says dope. See how how it feels. Two people say dope. Something's in the water. <laughs> uh, Man, I'm I'm nervous about. Like, I don't I'm, want people to be like. Rhett, you know, Rhett, I'm getting flushed you know just Rhett thinking Link about say. saying dope today. You know, man. you know what Rhett and Link say when they like something? They say it's dope. I heard them both describe this thing as dope uh, within thirty minutes of each other. Because awesome is tired, big tired. 
And I just made that up. Like I put big in front of something. I see that didn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Okay, you got to choose another word. Well, I'm, let me get let me get to some. Right. Uh, right, I've so heard this. I've heard this one. Uh, bops, bops. Now I know there's a uh, the baby song called Bop. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about like he's looking for a bop, like he's looking for he wants his song, he wants his track to bop. Mm -hmm. To him, it means it means something in terms of like the feel he gets. It's like it makes you kind of makes you move in a certain way that then you gotta you gotta do that certain rhyme scheme that they do now. I think you the might, rappers. I, I think you might be overthinking it. I think it just means it's like a. It's a good. It's a good song, like a, an enjoyable song. He says a modern enjoyable song. Oh, uh, I have, okay. Now I knew this one. Now, you, now I think it can be used in a couple of ways because I shout out to the baby. I definitely North heard, Carolina. I've heard uh, Locke say that something bops. That bops. That's because, yeah, that's very hip hop. That that bops, or I guess you could say that's a bop. I don't think you can say that's a yeah, bop. Yeah, you can. I think you can. That song, that bops though, I think is better. It's even more, that's like more refined. It's like a, like they wouldn't say I'm looking for a banger. You're looking for a bop now. You don't want a banger anymore. Bangers are over. Whereas we would've Bangers just, aren't dope. We would've just said a good hook. Yeah, that's old old school. Well that, a hook applies to a certain part of the song though. That's a hit. Ooh, that's a hit. That's what I would say. <laughs> I think you'd say another one. That's popping. That's what you would say. <laughs> Is pop popping might be on here. A bop. Is popping old? Or I mean, this is not a comprehensive list. Um, now this one's. Yeah, he's got bouta in there. Bouta. Like bouta bouta. Like no b o u t a. Like I'm about to bouta. Hmm. That. That that doesn't. I don't know if that should. I think you should take that off the list, Mr. Callahan. Because I I'm about to, I'm about to dance thirties. What's what was it? Pop thirties, bang thirties, bang thirties. I'm about to bang thirties. Uh, if you don't play my bop. Now I've heard there, there's two different versions of this. I'm uh, catch a fade. Catch a fade. What's the other version? Catch these hands. Catch these hands? Haven't heard that either. Oh, I've heard that. My my son. I think has, this is has, fighting too. Yeah, when I, like sometimes you about to catch about me, to catch these me, fans. Me, me and Locke will like do some like shadow boxing, slap boxing type type stuff, and like you know, and uh, like I'll just see him in the kitchen. I'll go up to him and hit him. That's what we do in the McLaughlin family. I mean, okay. just play fight. And okay. he's like, "You're gonna catch these hands, Dad." I haven't. He. I've never caught the hands. <laughs> um, but catch this fade. Catch a fade is also. <laughs> I feel like such. I feel like a news anchor. <laughs> Catch, Catch a, a fade. fade is, is also it, acceptable. I thought fade was a haircut. That's Maybe what's, it's, I think it's if you like punch someone on the side the head, of the head where they a have a fade, a glancing blow of the head. Yeah, if you, you give them a glancing blow to the. To the temple. Well, that's where the if you punch them in the temple, that's where the fade is. Technically, if you catch a fade, you would actually grab hold of the hair. See, now you're going too far. Acting like too literal. You catch it with your face. But isn't it you beat your face? But the idea of actually make up literally catching someone's hands who's trying to fight you that, that's awesome. Like if I was like describing a fight, a high school fight, and I was like, dude. This dude totally caught his hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh like, yeah. He literally, he tried to punch him and he caught his hands. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> hey, like, punch me in the face right now. <laughs> like oh, that. you see that? That's like superhero stuff. Yeah, man. man, yeah. Punch me with the other hand. <laughs> yeah, see that? Look I caught that. your hands. And now I'm gonna bang your hands together and make a 30 firework. 30 times? Make a, yeah, <laughs> and make a firework. You only have to do it three times to get to 30 because it's 10 fingers. My, um, my dad would visit me in college and uh, leading up to Christmas time, or maybe it was my birthday. I'm pretty sure it was Christmas time because I remember buying winter clothes. Because he he would take me to the mall, and we would just we'd go on like a shopping spree. We did this uh, like for two or three years in a row in college, and I remember um, what you said about how you and Locke would like give love licks to each other, like punch each other. 
I remember I was walking in, in the Crabtree Mall with my dad and we were shopping one Christmas and like I was buying buying stuff in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And um, I was probably seeing stuff he didn't understand. Yeah. I, I don't. Awesome. As a side note, I don't remember that we were like heavy into the like vernacular. Like I, I do think a lot of it comes from hip hop culture. Like there's there's so many sayings, and then there's the internet culture, and there's so many so many personalities. Like not just beauty gurus, but everybody on the internet has a way of like coming up with their phraseology, and then it kind of memifying. Um, and I won't even get into memes yet. But I don't recall as a side note, when I think back to walking down the mall with my dad that I was like, that we were saying those type of things. I mean, we listened to rap music, but we also knew that it wasn't for us to speak in the same way. It was like we were, you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't the most, po it wasn't popularized culture in the way that hip hop is now. So I think. We call, we, we call things cool. Something is cool, something is awesome. Uh, we didn't use rad. Hmm. We actually, never did rad. W which that's come back in like a hipster. But that's a hipster terminology. But when I was now. in California, like from ages three to five, I specifically remember people saying rad because that was like early eighties. Well, there was a s surf culture and skate culture. Also, was a place that had a tubular. lot of terminology. They used the word tubular, tubular and yeah, and gnarly. Yep, <laughs> and so a lot of those things. <laughs> So you have these subcultures. <laughs> Feldman remembers tubular. Did you, then, say, did you say tubular? Did you ever use that, seriously? It's the valley. Totally dude. Um, but I was walking down there and I remember we, we, we were gonna buy some, some, some big bag of jeans or something and I just reached over and I just, I punched my dad in the shoulder. Just like a love lick, you know? He, w we didn't have that thing that you and Locke have where you're like shadow boxing or whatever, but like, just as a show of affection, I did. I we were in conversation. I can't remember the specific context, but I punched him in the shoulder, and that was the end of it. And then it was um, like a year later. Oh yeah. My dad is talking about his shoulder. He's like, "Yeah, I'm I'm still having some trouble with my shoulder." And I'm like, "What do you mean? Because I actually have some trouble with my shoulder. I think it's like this might be a genetic thing. Like my shoulder pops out of joint." He's like, "Well." Mine started when you punched me that day in the mall. I actually had to go to the doctor and he said that like um, a ligament was separated. Man, you, I separated listen, a ligament on my dad trying to give him a love listen, lick. I've said this for years. You, this is why I don't, anytime we have to do something where like it requires you hitting me or you doing something, <laughs> you don't know your own strength or you don't, or you try to do it a little bit harder. I, I, you hit him too hard, man. Well, obviously, and I felt horrible about it. I mean. You've never permanently injured me. I wasn't trying to prove anything. It no, was I'm obviously. Just, no, I'm just saying, it's like, you just did, you did it, it was excessive. So I tell Lincoln, like Lincoln will start to roughhouse me and I'm like very, especially because I actually do have shoulder issues <laughs> and I'm doing like physical therapy for my shoulder. Um, because I'm I'm hype I have hypermobility. That's what I'm diagnosed with. Like my all my joints, my shoulder joints and elbow joints are like they're a little too mobile and they're not mm -hmm. supported enough. So we'll start roughhousing because I'll grab him and like put him in a bear hug or something. And I I'm very aware w the combination of my what I did to my dad and then how my shoulder feels. That like he's gonna do the same thing to me and it's gonna be a legacy. That would not be lit. Or dope. I will never say lit. That like dope. I think I can do. So, something about the way your mouth is shaped. Well, uh, it, and you can say it kind of under your breath, like dope. But like lit. It's like it's lit. You got to say it like Travis Scott or sometimes something. Sometimes they say litty. I've heard Locke say litty, which is an alteration of lit. Uh, you know this one. Clap back. That's easy. That's when you retort. You, you give back what they gave to you? Yeah, you get an insult, you respond with an equal or greater insult. Mm -hmm. But clapped, clapped. Now, I mean back in 90s hip hop culture, the, the, the clap the clap was uh, Was an STD. STI we'll call it. Don't call them a disease anymore, you call it an infection. Infection. Yeah, okay. an STI. 
Right. Formerly known as an STD. Why do they have to change that? I don't know, just so it's more approachable. <laughs> I don't know. Is it always an infection? I think so, yeah. What if it's just sometimes it's a disease? Uh, I, I think they're, uh, because disease. Because a disease is it, not something that can be, is, is necessarily transmitted. That could be something that is just a. I don't think that's the reason. I think it might be because. Because it could be a genetic disease. Like something. An infection implies that like, I guess you can take penicillin and cure it. You can get rid of it. But well, some of them also you can't, an like, infection can be passed and some in a disease like doesn't herpes. necessarily have to be a communicable disease. It can be an incommunicable disease or it could be a genetic disease. And so you can't give somebody a sexually transmitted genetic disease unless they're your offspring. And at that point it's get the it all breaks down. Like if you have a weird penis <laughs> What? Like I'm saying, if you have like That's a not, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I've saying I got an STD. It's if, called weird penis. If, if you got had a weird penis, I'm saying like if you got something genetically wrong with your penis, that would be considered a disease, and then you have a, 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 a you pass a you pass a weird penis syndrome on to your child. Okay, that's a, that would be that is it that could be a that's technically a sexually transmitted disease because no, it was it's not. genetic. No, and, no, it's and you not. Had to have sex to have a no, kid. You're you're wrong. You're wrong in I'm so many demonstrated, places. I'm demonstrating why ST, they, why they don't use STD anymore. That's what because that, it's STI. I'm sorry I brought it up because we neither one of us know. Uh, I have herpes. Do you have the on clap? my mouth? Do you have the clap? I don't is have the clap, and I don't know what the clap is. Syphilis. I don't know. What is the clap? Could gonorrhea, somebody, I don't know. Some, could somebody look that up? Uh, somebody some, clap back so, on the clap. Everyone is afraid to Google the clap <laughs> on the work on the work Wi-Fi. <laughs> Give me gonorrhea. Gonorrhea. Hey, and now they've got super gonorrhea. You heard about this? Well, this is okay. It's my new favorite. We don't we don't know how to speak to the children, but we have so much information that they need. My new favorite superhero, super gonorrhea. Um, super gonorrhea is basically, a, a lot of infections are turning, a lot of viral infections are becoming impossible to treat or bacterial, both. Basically completely um, immune to treatment. And so if you get the strain of gonorrhea that they can't treat anymore, you got super gonorrhea and I just think uh, it never goes away unless you've got weird penis syndrome. <laughs> No. Which at that point it counteracts it, and <laughs> yeah, you so you don't want you don't want gonorrhea, and you definitely don't want super gonorrhea. And ironically, the people who need to communicate these things the most need to be able to speak the language of Gen Z. So you're saying that like if we make a brochure like what your mother would have had at the health department, yeah, that's all about STIs. It needs to say things like, "Got the clap? Well, clap clap back, clap back on the clap, clap that back on the clap with a condom." One that's no, too, no, little too, too late. late. Too late. <laughs> clap back on the clap with. Get ahead of the clap. Penicillin. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if penicillin works anymore. Uh, clapped <laughs> means a crazy person. Uh, which even that, I don't think Gen Z even says use their term crazy anymore. No. No, that's a, it, it's that's not PC. You can't call somebody crazy. Nope. Um, but or, or someone who was punched. I, I don't know, these people up in Massachusetts, I don't know if, Gen, if they're, this is but, representative of all of Gen Z, Mr. Callahan. But there's a lot of reference to fighting. Man, he got clapped because he caught them hands. Cracky. Crikey? Cracky. Crikey. <laughs> no, not crikey. Crikey. I, that should be on the list. Cracky. Cracky, that's when, you, when you're like, when you laugh a lot. Man, if only it were that simple. Man, Don is so cracky. He can't hold it together. It's someone who jewels vapes. It's a oh. vape. It's a vapor. So it's it's like it's like you're you have an addictive habit, an addictive man. And these these kids, man, they're vaping like crazy, man. Like Locke said that basically, anytime you go in the bathroom at their school, where all our kids go now. Um, yeah, my kid. I encourage my kids to use the restroom frequently. 
they because I encourage them to be hydrated. Now that might be working against me because now they it's vaping. Well, they're happening. doing involuntary. They're getting secondhand vapes, man. Because the kids are vaping in there, and I don't know why. I don't understand why they can't. Kids are vaping like in class. I think they have cracked down on it. Cracky. Speaking of cracky, I think they've cracked down on it a little bit. Um. Well, but, with the, but there's, there's stories the, of people. There's people die. I mean, with the people dying, and they're trying to get to the bottom. As of this recording, they're still trying to get to the bottom of what's what's killing these. Oh, you think you, you think people. some sometime between the recording of this and the publishing, they're going to solve it. <laughs> that, that's what you're, you're very hopeful. Bre- breaking news every day. I mean, there's like black market vapes being created, but, but that, they haven't definitively said that that's what it's associated with. But all vaping is most likely bad for you, you know, and not just the nicotine which kids shouldn't have, but which we talked about with the, when the, we had the Surgeon General on. And we, we had the Surgeon General on, remember that? And we did Uncle like Mythical the more. anti-vaping thing. Yeah, a lot of good that did. And um, it was funny because there was a couple of like, v- there's these vaping YouTube channels and there was a couple of people that came after us and they were like, Red Link don't know what they're talking about. Vaping is completely safe. They're speaking out of ignorance. Um, listen, Whatever they find, right? What, what, whatever they find, and I know that some of the people who are dying are probably getting like black market stuff that's got other chemicals are in it or whatever. But the bottom line is, your lungs were made to breathe air, right? Yeah. And so changing the concentration that drastically of whatever it is you're putting into your body, even if it isn't combusting at the same temperature that tobacco would be combusting at, it, you, it can't, be, can't good. be good. This is and not a cra- good thing. And if you're cracky, meaning you're on that thing all the time, uh, nicotine is highly addictive. Well, and the reason, and then you're 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 ingesting this vapor all the time. It is so much more. So, you end up doing so much more than you typically would with smoking because at least when we were coming up. If you wanted to smoke, you had to go to the. We had a smoking pit at Harnett Central High School. There was a smoking pit, I'm sure they don't have this anymore. But basically there was that depressed, literally depressed and also physically depressed area that um, people stood out there and smoked. And, but you had to go out there to do it, so how many cigarettes are you gonna get to smoke in a day, right? Yeah. But with this vape, you can just, they're doing it in class. Crackies everywhere, man. Hmm. Don't be a cracky. Find a new hobby. We're not even out of the seas. Cherry pick a little bit, because I also want to talk about the dynamic of, I, I think our, ch- like us having children at the age they are now is a dynamic that I'd like to explore. Finesse, I've heard this one. Is this a noun or a verb? This is a verb. Well, if you finesse something or someone, you like you, you take a light touch to get what you want. I can't think that. It means exactly that there. It means to steal. Oh, to steal. I'm gonna finesse your mug. It's kinda like you got sticky fingers, but a light, a, a light, you can stick your hand on somebody's pocket and pull out a wallet and they won't know it because you're, you're very finesse. Finesse is also a uh, hairspray. It is. Here, now, okay, of course everyone knows low key and there is a high key. Thor and low key. My kids use low key and high key. And high key. So it's like. It's I low a, key am into this. A I high key want to have that. It's a qualifier. Down. Low key, it's like, it's, it could be on the down you low. Have, you, you haven't heard for this from your children? They don't say it. Don't say low key? Mm-mm. Like low key is probably the most common one that I've heard amongst on this list, I've also heard this one. Locke says this all the time. Facts. Facts. Now to me that's meme speak. And I think that, I I don't know what, I don't know how I know, but I can just tell when my kids go into meme speak. Lily does this a lot. I mean, she she created a Pinterest account just to save memes that she can go back to and laugh at. And like. They snicker to herself on her phone whenever. Snicker, she, you need a better word than that. When she's, you know. So you can cracky up with herself? No, she's not. I, don't know. I look for one that is what you do with memes, but, she, and then she'll say it, and it won't be just like, yeet, but 
she, it'll, I can just tell she goes into this speak that, oh, you just quoted a meme, did you not? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, uh, and I used to be like, well, show it to me. You know, because it conjures up this visual. That's why, been, why are you saying that about facts, though? Because I think that facts is meme speak. Like, there's people will write some. It'll be a, there'll be a statement, and then it'll just say facts. And f- you say facts when it's like somebody says something that you strongly agree with. I think that's what it means. Yeah, that's definitely what it means. But I mean, and, and I'm sure it could be in a meme. But like, it's also just link. It's just a slang. Like somebody says something like facts. But you see it in meme form a lot. Okay. And I don't know which came first, but I know there's lots of things that that my kids say that are they're just quoting memes to each other, conjuring a visual image that's a shared experience and that makes the other person laugh. It's like an inside joke. Um, and I mean, my opinion, I'm just like, yeet it. Yeet it. Do you know where yeet came from? Some kid who threw something, and when he threw it, he said, yeet! <laughs> and then that's where it came from. So it was just a little video that people passed around with this kid saying yeet, and then yeet started to mean pr- 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 throwing something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's special. That's special, man. I like that. That's the internet. Uh Oh, okay, there's a couple, okay, there's a few here that are, very old school, and I guess they're coming back. At least they're coming back in Massachusetts in Mr. Callahan's class. Get hip means to adopt a new trend, which is what it meant for us. Jams, okay, an old enjoyable song. Hmm. Like that's my jam. Okay, yeah. I'm dead. It's like I. I think that I think we elicit that response a lot. I see that. In response to things that we've done on our show, it's like it 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 shook you in a positive way. It was amusing. Yeah, I'm dead. Shook you in a positive way. I'm shook. Shook could be like moved in a negative way. Yeah, I'm shook. I don't know what to say, man. Real one. Real one. Yeah, that's referring to a person who's authentic. And yeah, you like them. A valid person, somebody you trust. He's a real one. Um, no cap. No cap. No cap, man. Um, you're using an accent. Why are you using an accent? I'm using a Generation Z, like slightly informed by hip hop. No cap, like your eyebrows. I eye- listen to hip hop sometimes. Like your eyebrows have to kinda like no go No cap, up. man. Your eyebrows kinda have to go together a little no bit. No cap. No cap. That's real. I mean, it's really when you do your eyebrows like that, you start to seem like you're saying something that's a little more cool. No cap means no limit. I can't be. I can't be contained. No, too literal. It means I'm serious. No lie, for real. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. This one's interesting. Period T is period with a T on the end, and I don't know if that is a typo by Mr. Callahan. Like a dot and a T? It's just period. The and then, word period. And then T on the end of it, as if it's period. 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 What is, I'm sure that's period. how they say it. It says C fax. <laughs> <laughs> now it does remind me of tsk, 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 which is that, do you know about these Visco girls? Oh. I you, know he sounds so old. You mean the ones with the cameras? No, uh, it's girls. Again, I think Lincoln knows. What, Lincoln, he said he wanted to be this for how. He said I want to be a Visco girl for Halloween. I'm like, but well, t- I've heard a little bit. But tell me about that. And he was like, you have a, you have a hydro flask. You have a lot of scrunchies in your hair and maybe on your arms. You like have a hat or a shirt that says like save the turtles and you're wearing yoga pants. You're wearing like Lululemon. Right, but where was where does the visco come from? I don't know. V S C O. I thought that I think well, I thought it had something to do with a camera. And I'm like, so are you kind of talking like like a girl coming who seems like she's coming from the gym but she never went to the gym, but she likes environmental causes and she has like a high ponytail like Ariana Grande and he's like, "Yeah." What is it? Uh Generally used as an insult for a young woman who posts trendy pictures of herself edited on the app. Yeah. Visco. Oh, there's yeah, an yeah. App See, I called you. Visco. Yeah. 
But that's what they look like. Right, it's a type of person who uses that app. I can imagine that. He decided to be an e-boy, which I was like, what is that, emo? And he was like. What is an e-boy? Yeah. He's like, you know, you wear like. This is what he's gonna You be wear like a chain. Halloween, and then you wear okay. like a, you know, for Halloween. And he, you wear like a long, you wear like black and white clothes and like you part your hair down the middle. Cause I was like, I got a pizza costume you can wear. He's like, Dad, I wanna look, I wanna look cool for Halloween. Well, be an e-boy then. But. You'll slay. Oh, slay is one? What What do you think, I mean, we're obviously really showing our dad. I, I don't think this, I, I, is it, are we actually more in touch with the fact that we're, or are we more, let me ask that again. Are we more in touch than we think or are we more in touch that we're out of touch because of the age of our kids? What's the dynamic there? Well, I feel like, I think what you talked about earlier and this sort of self-regulating um, tendency that we have, both to regulate ourselves and to regulate one another, um, it makes adopting like a new a new word into your into your terminology. It makes it it it, it makes us really hesitant to do that, right? And so, because it's like, what does it say about me if I'm suddenly using this new word? And so we haven't picked up on a lot of new things. We haven't changed the way that we've talked in terms of the terminology a lot over time. But what we have done is is illustrated by your uh, your big pants is uh, we've kind of in ways that maybe people that we went to high school with that are didn't cho choose to be YouTubers for a living don't necessarily follow the trends. Now, one of the things we we've talked about fashion before, so we we were going to do a podcast about that, but we're not. But one of the things I, I was talking about with Jesse, I was like, I don't something about now that I've got kids who like I've got a teenager in my house, and if I were to just say I'm going to go to Urban Outfitters and I'm just going to buy everything on the rack at Urban Outfitters and dress that way, now I'm dressing the same way as my 15 year old kid, and at some point it kind of feels like I. I don't want to do that anymore. And I and I and I told Jesse I was like is it because Locke is now a teenager and then we're going into the same store and we're looking at the same clothes and and for the first time ever I'm just going into a place like Urban Outfitters and just thinking I don't know if there's anything in here for me. Mm -hmm. And she said, "Well, it could be part of it, but I also think that you've gotten to an age where you kind of know what looks good on you, you kind of know what shapes look good on you and you may not like the shapes. Like Shia LaBeouf said on the and Hot that, Ones. And that brought us back interview. to our favorite Hot Ones episode ever of Shia LaBeouf talking about how the way he sees clothes is he just thinks about shapes, he doesn't think about colors or patterns, he thinks about shapes. And I was like, I've never connected more with something. <laughs> I think about shapes and it probably has something to do with just being a a big man, <laughs> uh, but anyway, I found myself resistant. Like, you know, uh, and you've always been a little bit more like, if there's some a fashion trend that's going to happen, like you're gonna you're gonna open that door earlier than I am, and I've got reasons I won't go into that are boring about why I think I I, I delay that. But this latest trend with the '90s and the all the athletic clothes and the boxy things and the block clo block colors and horizontal stripes and all this. I'm not on board for this one. You know, and I feel like I'm kind of taking an exit a little bit. Like I'm on I've been on this interstate for a while that's sort of like, okay, I'm kind of I'm kind of conscious of fashion trends and I try to do something that seems fashionable and I kind of dress like a young person but I kind of feel like I'm on the exit and I'm like, I'm 42, I think I'm gonna have my own style and I'm not gonna be too worried about what the general style is anymore and I'm just gonna wear what I feel good in. You I, know what the I'm way, saying? The decision I've made is more of a, I'm gonna get on a parallel highway that still is moving. I like, 
I like trying new things, but I don't wanna emulate, I don't wanna start looking like my son. I mean, a lot of shirts are getting a little too small for me. I, I end up giving them to Lincoln. He likes, about, he likes maybe a third of them. He'll wear some of them. But it, yeah, that's, that's, that's waning. Yeah. It's just a different aesthetic. But I, I like to have fun with an aesthetic but I just want it to be my own thing. It's not just exiting and like parking. It's like, well, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go full dad. I agree with that. Pop out the gap. Well, that's what I don't want to do because you got you got somebody like I. I don't go on Facebook anymore, but um, in the same way, like personally going on and like looking at old friends' photos and stuff like that. But I remember a decade ago when I did such such a thing, you'd go in there and you'd and, and so you know a decade ago I'm just over thirty years old and you go on there and you see somebody you went to high school with and you're like man that dude has just he's old. It isn't oh he aged. It might be that with somebody who's like lost hair or their hair turned gray or something like that. It's but but it's, it's a lot not that, a lot of it's conformity. They made an aesthetic decision to be like, I, I, this is my job, I'm a professional. And so I'm going to dress and behave the same way that everyone else at this place of work does up to age 65, 70 years old, right? And so it's just like you see this 30 year old person and you're like, man, you don't seem youthful anymore, you seem old because you've conformed, you, you've, instead of there being a slow progression, you just said, I gotta get into this lane, I gotta get into professional lane, so now I've got my polo tucked into my khakis. Right. Right? But we are in the art lane, if you wanna go, and so that's one of the things I love about, you know, where I'm at in my life, is that, especially in this town where there's, there's no judgment for anybody being anything they want to be and expressing themselves because there's so is so so much of an art. Nobody lo town. nobody looks at you funny if you dress weird. So it's not that I want to I want to stay relevant to the kids. It's that I want to be able to express myself and say you know I don't want to conform. I don't want to conform to them because that's kind of sad. It's like okay, you're in your forties. You you're trying to. This is how you're trying to connect with your. 16 and 14 year old? By looking by like, like at like any that? moment you could. Crash their party? Get Well, get into some sort of. Ath like a narc? Ambiguous athletic event. <laughs> like maybe there's a uniform under that tracksuit. Right, <laughs> yeah, it ain't gonna work for us. But finding. But track suits are classic though, I will say that. Finding something. Still think we can do track suits. Finding something, yeah, you could do that. You know, I, d I gave up on that. You know, I had well, that. you took that. You, you you wore that track suit on GMM. It, call, it, really, it really caused a ruckus. I couldn't even wear it the whole episode. Couldn't even. Well, um, but I hold on. But I didn't relate it back to what we're talking. Relate about. it and let's shut this down because that would be a dope way to end it. Uh, oh, you, you're, okay. I think you've got to use it in mixed company before it really counts. So that was a nice try. Uh, to relate it back to this and the question that you asked, which is like, what are we out of touch? You haven't picked your word, by the way. What's your word? Um, what word do you actually think you can use? Facts. That could be tough to come up. That's right? a tough one because it's so definitive. It it it's a closing statement. Like when you say facts, whoever you're talking to has nothing to say. It's just like, oh, he just said facts. If you're like, facts, you can, you, facts is the end of a of a thought. But dope can just no, you it's can a, nestle it's it in a, there. It's a response though. Somebody says some facts. Facts. You know what? I could say I could do low key or high key. Would that be weird? Yes, but I think that's a good <laughs> idea. Are we backtracking on what we just said? That like, are we? That's low key. We got to try it, okay? I know that this is inconsistent with what I just said about getting on my own lane and like being an artist and expressing myself. I feel like dope is really it's too almost but like, too easy. It's not. Easy, I legitimately it's not like hip hop, okay? What about I don't Schlitty? like it so Schlitty. that my son will like me. Schlitty so don't is, judge me. Schlitty's a good time. I love the rhythms. Uh, I'm gonna do, I, facts. Facts, man. All right, I'm a, I'm a be <laughs> waiting with bated breath for that one. But to relate what I was just saying about the fashion back to this, is I do think that I am, uh, I've in with the fashion thing. I've tr there's been a little bit more effort, right? And I, 
and I do think that some of it is the fact that we're free to dress how we want to. We don't, no, we're, no one's gonna fire us for dressing a certain way and there's no dress code. Is there a dress code? I mean, there kind of probably is a dress code here. Like you can't like, you can't wear a thong and nothing else <laughs> at Mythical Entertainment. And if and if we haven't specified that yet, we should probably put that in the employee handbook. Wow. Um, but you can dress how you want and uh, we've taken full advantage of that, right? Well, we haven't worn a thong. <laughs> Not yet. Uh, facts. Uh, okay, that didn't work. Uh, but with terminology, lingo, we've pretty much continued to talk the same way. Now we've lost our accent that we had in North Carolina for the most part, it comes back at certain times, but that's really a function of hearing yourself hours and hours of your own voice heard back, you end up, it happens with a lot of people, your voice, ends, you, you end up kinda changing. What are you getting at? I'm just saying that I feel absolutely no compulsion to try to use any of this. But but we just came up with a compulsion that you were gonna do it. Yeah, we're gonna do facts. it because it's fun. We're gonna do it because it's fun and, 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 and hey, maybe we'll learn something. We'll let you know, but you let us know Hashtag ear biscuits. If you disagree, just go. Feel free to put us on blast, as they say. That's good. Wreck baby, wreck baby. One, two, three, four. Wreck baby, wreck baby. One, two. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make a recommendation for y'all. Um, I re I'm actually recommending this to you because I think you'll like it. Um, I went into a bookstore because I was told that. Lost Causes of Bleak Creek had a placard at the um, at Vroman's bookstore in Pasadena, so I went over there and they didn't have it. This was this was um, over a month ago now, and I was in there. I was like, you know what? I'm in a freaking bookstore. I'm I, I it's so sad, but maybe I was you like, should buy a book. <laughs> maybe I should buy a book because I was just thinking I'm just going to look around at all these books, but I never thought I'd actually buy one because I didn't think I'd actually read one because I'd gotten out of the habit. Um, but I picked up a book and I will recommend it because I'm really enjoying it. Um, the reason why I, I, I was, I, for some reason I went to the sci-fi section. I was like, I want a good sci-fi book. Um, got a book called The Three Body Problem. And honestly, one of the reasons that I got it was because um, it won an award, it won the Hugo Award for best novel in 2015. It's part of a trilogy of novels, so if I really like it, then I can kind of dig in, because I, I really like to dig into a world if I like it. That's why I, once I started reading Game of Thrones, I read all of them. Um, uh, it's originally written in Chinese and, and translated into English, which concerned me, but it has no impact. And then what sealed the deal and counteracted that and made me buy it, not only did it have a cool cover, but it, Barack Obama endorsed it, wildly imaginative. Hmm. Endorse, so endorsement is really how do you movie. get how do you get Barack Obama to endorse your sci-fi novel? He's a sci-fi fan. Wildly imaginative. That's what he said. And I was like, man, I got to get this. Um, the Three Body Problem is a hard science fiction novel. Hard science fiction. Yeah, I'm going hard. It is the first novel of the Remembrance of Earth's Past trilogy um, by writer Lou Sixon. That's all I'm gonna say. If you're if you're into, oh man, this thing's it's not, not very long either, right? It's 320 something pages. Is that what it said? A lot of times, sci-fi is so long that my attention span is like not great. I, I'm halfway through like so many books right now. 302 pages. Oh, yeah. that's yeah, that's great. So I'm halfway through. Um, it's 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 a fun, wildly imaginative book. Uh, yeah, it's got the three VR. body problem. Y you'll like it because there's that a whole... probably was a catchier title in Chinese. Uh, it the three body problem actually references um, um, a problem in physics in orbital mechanics, according to the Wikipedia. So there's a lot of physics involved. Um, a lot of smart scientists are like the key. Uh, the key people in the city, but it's but it's also like inter, like being ready for interdimensional battle. And I'm only halfway through the book, so I could spoil some things. But there's some things I'm still like, is, is there something alien going on here? I actually, 
I don't fully know yet, but there's a lot of VR. There's an amazing VR game within the book that Man. the way that that world works. Sounds like it slaps. Is it, it slaps. It's dope. That's my rec. I'll check it out. Yeah, check it out. Hashtag Ear Biscuits. We'll speak at you next week. Speak at us that way. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.